30,000 square kilometers have been lost to oil and gas well pads, storage tanks, and associated roads just in the period from 2000 to 2015, just in that 15-year period. 30,000 square kilometers just for oil and gas. So the amount that that is lost, the equivalent of lost rangelands is the equivalent of approximately 5 million animal units per month. I don't want to think about what that is. <laughs> I kind of think I know. And the amount of biomass lost in croplands is equivalent of 100. 20.2 million bushels of wheat. So the thing is, the 3 million hectares of land lost is likely, uh, unlike renewables, long-lasting and potentially permanent. Permanent? Yeah, because this is toxic. Uh, what's what's left is toxic. Brown site, brownfield. They call it brownfields. It's like a gas station, a corner gas station. You can't have a house where there was a corner gas station. No. That land is contaminated that... forever. Yeah. But if you put in an EV charging supercharger there, you take it out, it's fine. Yeah. You take a wind it's turbine fine. out, fine. Solar farm, you can not only have agriculture taking place under the solar panels, you take them out and it becomes a farm again or whatever you want, Disneyland. So the gas power plants themselves occupy a rather small landscape footprint, it says. You must take into account that uh, those power plants also require significant infrastructure to operate. Well pads, storage tanks, pipelines, access roads, and refineries, just to name a few. I The pipeline behind my house goes on for many hundreds of kilometers, and I can't imagine the hectares that it in itself takes up. But you cannot do anything on it, I know, because I get a pamphlet in the mail every 10 days telling me I can't, you know, so much as fart on it because they don't want me to. You know, yeah. I can't bring in a, a backloader because I don't have an alleyway here. I can't, you know, bring in a, a small tractor. I can't bring in anything, anything at all. They don't want, because I talked to them on the phone when I... Because I, I get, um, you know, how you dial before you dig. Well, I, I do that. And guess who calls? The pipeline companies actually call when I do that. Yeah. Uh, put out that request to put in my uh, above ground swimming pool. And yeah, they tell me, you can't do anything like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> nothing at all. So this, you, and they kill the gophers. So it's, the land is pointless. They, they mow it. They do go over it with a tractor and mow it once a month. But other than that, it's. So the Department of Energy estimates the amount of land used by wind turbines would require 3,200 square kilometers or 790,000 acres by 2050 when we met our Paris climate agreed, you know, targets. And that's roughly a tenth of the land used by oil and gas, uh, which is, uh, yeah, you know, 30% of electricity could be coming from wind for a tenth of the land used by oil and gas. So that's, and that's just in the States, right? The National Renewable Energy Lab, one hectare or 2.5 2 acres uh, is what you need per gigawatt hour of solar generation, if you want to talk solar now. So for 3 million hectares lost to oil and gas in that 15 year period, you could put up solar power that would generate 75% of America's total annual electricity generation output. But, you know, with solar power, like I said, you can put it anywhere. You don't have to put it on farmland. You can put yeah. it on rooftops. You can put it on schools, factories, and you should be. And I don't know why they're not, at least here in North America. In Australia, you're doing a pretty good job. And that's, remember, this is just oil and gas. This doesn't even talk about other fossil fuels like coal and where entire, you know, mountaintops are removed. So that's my, my story on that.